Yeah. Sizzagium! Sizzagium Aromatica! Caparesis Sempervirens! Simbobo con Martini! Eleteria Cardamomum! Did you get all that? Can you translate it? Does it sound like Latin? Because it is Latin. We're just talking about our botanical names, the wonderful Latin binomials that you can know all your plants by. And why should anybody even care about a Latin name for something? Isn't Latin dead? Latin. It was. It's still alive. It's still alive? That's how we know our plants and all the roots of all of our words. I never learned it, though, I hate to say, in school. That's but okay. I've learned it now with my aromatics. And why is knowing the Latin name important when it comes to our aromatics? Mm. Can't we just, you know, call lavender lavender and rosemary rosemary? Yeah, we could, but we wouldn't have a clue what we had. So the botanical name is the name we know what oil is because there's so many common names. Just if you even just look at spruce, there's a lot of different kinds. And they have hemlock spruce, or white spruce, or black spruce, or whatever. And, you know, every country has a different name for it, or every um, ethnic group. So, the botanical name in Latin, though, is the only one. There's only one of those. So, so that, knowing our Latin names for an essential oil, and that's one of the ways that you can tell if you're getting real essential oils, is they should say on the bottle the Latin name. Um, and that's how you know what you're actually working with. I think spruce is a great example. Cedarwood's another great example. So with spruce, and we were just discussing spruce a lot this month because we are covering spruce in the Inner Sanctum membership. Paisia Mariana. And... Zuga Canandesis. Are the two that we profile in our deep dive. Right, happy. That's okay. <laughs> I think the magic is still there, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, we had a, a couple arguments about these botanical names. <laughs> Because I would look in certain resources and they would be listed, like there's one resource that lists hemlock spruce, the suga, um, the part of the suga genus, as a pinus. Yes. Or a picea, yes. which match matches the black spruce name. And I would be like, are they right. of the same genus or not? And Well, I, can I just say something? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is I, your show. Uh, the, the first problem is a lot of times the people that are distilling don't know what they have. So a, a, label, a bottle may be mislabeled. Yeah, and they may just go wild craft out on the hillside and the people picking don't know that this is Picea Mariana and this is Picea Engelman over here. So there may be mixed batches. So that's the first thing. But then with, you know, our more ethical companies, they know that theirs is all spruce. So we can count on that being Pisces and Mariana. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the problems in that. But the, the, the distiller not knowing what the botanical name is of the plant they're distilling is then transferred on to the broker and the wholesaler and the down the line. So that's why you may or may not know what you're getting. But at least if they have a botanical name, you're a lot closer than spruce. Absolutely. And so also what I learned in this process, and one of the reasons why I love doing these explorations and deep dives with you is because even though I've sat in her classes for like years or possibly a decade at this point, um, I've learned something new each time. And I recently read the book, and you're reading the book. Um, oh, yeah. The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert, fiction novel. Wonderful, wonderful book. But in there, and also in further research, I've come to realize that we've really only been classifying plants in this taxonomical system for a couple hundred years, which sounds like a long time, but when you think of the long-term history we've had with plants, it is a relatively short time. And also, the guy that started this whole system, Linnaeus, around mid-1700s, he only had like a 17, 
uh, a, a microscope, technology. yeah, it's technology Old from technology. the 1700s. So he wasn't able to look at things on the microscopic level or the, even the chemical level as we are now. So as we go further into classifying these plants, we're able to do it with greater precision. And thus, sometimes the names change. And they move from family to family because now we have the DNA showing blah, blah, blah as opposed to just the structures that he was looking at. Yep. The reproductive structure, the flower, how that sets up the petals, the alternate. This is how he was able to use it. But now with our technology, yeah, things are moving around. Mm -hmm. And it is a little irritating, you know, to, uh, I can't think of an example of something that's changed in my lifetime. Well, cinnamon, I think, is one of them. Mm -hmm. That the common name has changed, not the common, but the commonly used botanical name has changed. Yes. Which is a little confusing, but at least it's better than calling it all cinnamon. Yes, absolutely. And confusing it with cassia. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon mom cassia. <laughs> and that's why it's so fun to know, learn your botanical Anibia names. Rosadora. And so for me, what I've come to realize recently is I would previously be frustrated with it being listed as one name here and, oh, this is so confusing. And it would remind me of my, the old feelings I had when it came to essential chemistry. oil chemistry and kept me from studying further in the past. And so I just wanted to clear this up for you guys and let you know that not only is it incredible that we are able to identify these things, that humans kind of are order. able to take this this super biodiverse world of plants and put it in these orders um but there's also really great fun in learning the names of the plants yes and saying them out loud <laughs> and saying them out loud so we challenge you <laughs> <laughs> to to learn your spell. names and i mean you know spell casting actually has its roots within language within spoken language and not that saying a botanical name is casting a spell or anything like that but it does it's help fine. you get in touch with that magic that I, the plants i don't know about y'all but i've heard a lot about harry potter <laughs> And so I I'm feel reading like, the first book right now. I think that uh, you know some of those uh, spells can be um, useful for mm -hmm. botanical learning. Absolutely, <laughs> we can make up our own. Right? We totally can. So leave us a comment below and let us know what your favorite plant botanical name is and your favorite one to say because reading it is different. You gotta say it out loud when you open a book and see one. Do it, Symbopogonardus. What's that one? Do you know? And try to try Citronella. to say it. What you what got about there? Juniperus communis. Ooh, that's a fun one. Yes. Oh, La Vistacum Officionale. <laughs> now you can use a little accent if you like a little oh, Italian. Oh, you can do an accent. Or oh, you, well, let's do you another can, one. You can yeah. use a southern accent like Aniba Rosiodora or your favorite. Tennessee the man -on. <laughs> Well, there you go, folks. Let us know what your favorite botanical names are. And also, why don't you make up one for your own? Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm Sylvia's Hangarensi. And I guess I am <laughs> Nissus Silidensis. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, as a note, there is a genus called Nyssa, N-Y-S-S-A, and there is a plant it's called Nyssa, Nyssa Sylvatica. Sylvatica. How cool is that? And you might not know this, but her first name is actually Sylvia. Whoa. 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 Tweet that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.